Hey, how we doing? Good evening to everybody. Busy day, literally. I just sat back down in the chair. I had to run up and get something real quick. So, literally, I'm out of breath from trying to get up there so quick. I um, already have several people on. I got some comments and some questions as well. Now, I promise I'll get to some of the information on here. I've got uh, a bolo to shoot out as well. I've got, well, two bolos, honestly. I've got something else to show you here. I got a haul. I got another haul video coming out. I've got um, storage video going to be out uh, tomorrow or Saturday by the latest. For those in Patreon, and I already see several people from Patreon, the video is literally sitting on YouTube. All I have to do is copy the link and pop it on Patreon. So you will see a video up as soon as the show is over. And I mean as soon as. It's literally sitting there right now. Um, and in Patreon, too, I've got a guide coming out for something. So pay attention to the video. Um, I think I discussed in the back half of that video. So uh, it's something that was asked for. I've got it almost together. So um, I spent some time on this for you folks. So uh, it should be something that will be very, very useful to everybody. So just a touch on that. Um, let's see who's in here today. Uh, hang on just a second. Again, my feed pops all over the place. Uh, anybody? Well, thank you very kindly. Hazel, how are you doing? Don is such a character. I, I hope that's meant in a nice way. Um, I'm me, you know, love it or hate it. You know, that seems to be about the case. Hey, Duncan, how are you doing? How's things going? Good sales here. Sold a 1457 vellum for $330. Sales still great here. A vellum is like, um... Animal skin is what they used to write on at one point at one time. And I believe that's technically what vellum is. Um, I find stuff like that occasionally. Uh, not anywhere near um, as, as much as Duncan does. I did get a huge box of stamps, Duncan. And it's um, 14. It's a 14 cube box, basically, is what I fit it all into. Um, and it's, it's just loaded with old books and stuff. And it's somebody's like private collection where they made their own pages um, for stamps. And I'm going to be showing some of that in, in Patreon. But uh, it's a massive assortment. There must be, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand stamps, collectible stamps, not the big bunch of junk stamps you usually see. But they're all in books and vintage stuff. I shelled out for it. I shelled out a lot, you know, thousands for this thing. But um, there's, there's some good stock in there. Um, that's just a side note. Um, I love stamps. As Duncan knows. Um, hey, Penny, how are you doing? Sandra, how are you doing? Jeffrey, welcome, welcome. Home Thrifters, welcome as well. Treasure Experts. Um, the fourth, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about the fourth too today. Um, looks like everybody can hear me too. I didn't think to say that. I don't wear headphones too much. I'm, I was trying to get a haircut today. And um, if you saw my Instagram post, I was at uh, UT, which is University of Toledo here. I graduated there as well twice. Um, I was there with my son, and it's uh, the day before um, or the last day before you would check in for school. Everybody was coming in there, and they were clearing out the offices. So I've done this before. They'll set out books and stuff, college books from like last session and stuff that they're not going to use anymore. Usually they're given away free. I picked up a whole mess of college books. Check out Instagram if you want to see it. But I'm going to make just off the three top end books off of there, 245 bucks right off the bat. And they're all uh, annotated um, instructor books, uh, the enhanced ones. And they're mint, sealed with uh, the CDs still in the back. Those are given to professors at the schools. I know this because, you know, I went there. I know a few professors there that we got to be friends with and stuff. And anyway, another source, if you didn't know that, sometimes they'll clean out offices and stuff at the universities. Um, you know, and there was hundreds of books I could have taken. I showed just one table, but there was most of the building was just dumping off all their old books. And I could have probably spent the day there taking free books out of there. But, you know, at a point, I don't want to walk across campus with that many books. You can't park near the building and... We took two trips out to the car, and, you know, that was about all I really cared to do. It was raining, um, and I don't want to get the books all wet. So, anyway, my time didn't go with the haircut. So, next time you see me, it'll probably be short again. 
Uh, I was short, had short hair when I first started off. It's just getting to be a nuisance. Somebody asked why, you know, you must like long hair. I do love long hair, but I could care less. I just don't like running in to get it cut. So um, something always seems to happen. Um, it's just laziness on that part. It's just there. I don't really care what it looks like, I guess. Um, uh, let's see here. Where are we at? Uh, well, again, I, fourth is on here. I've got a bunch of topics to, to discuss. Uh, I got some questions in eBay payments, ranking for Google, SEO, um, thinking outside the box. And I'll give you some, some hints on that one there. In fact, I'm going to star that one so I don't forget it. Um, talk about equipment as well. Um, new videos coming up. I got two different giveaways coming out. Um, let me hit this off here too, and I'll go back over it again a little later on when more people are in. The other channel is, it's a done deal. It's already done. The new video is up. Um, it's going to be up this weekend for everybody, but those in Patreon, I'm going to post a, you get to see it ahead of time. It's going to be um, unlisted until um, it actually rolls uh, live, but uh, Patreon, you'll get to see the other channel, the first video off there first, a couple days ahead of time. Um, and I might change if, if I get feedback from some of the Patreons on it too. Um, there might be a few changes debating on it. I've got like four different credits I'm going to use, and I wasn't sure which one I wanted. Anyway, long story short, I won't go into that too much, but um, a lot of stuff going on. Fourth quarter, if you're not getting ready for fourth quarter, you're going to be in some trouble. It's This is when you bulk up, and I've talked about this before. Right now, stuff's still cheap when you're going out and sourcing and stuff. When you get into the end, into third quarter, at least up here where we're at, it starts to get tougher and tougher, and the prices go up. So if I go to an auction now, or last month would be the best month to go, like if I'm going to an auction right now, um, I'll pay much less for the exact same items in season because, you know, a lot of these, these other folks that are going to these auctions and stuff around here, local live auctions is what we're talking about, um, you know, because there'll be more and more people unable to source secondary markets or garage sales or flea markets and stuff because a lot of that shuts down. So around here, you have to source it throughout the summer and you stockpile it. That's why when I hear people talk about dead piles and stuff like that, I never worry about stuff like that as long as it's good material you know i'm going to hang on to it and we're going to list it as we get to it who cares if it sits here for a long time i'm into vintage and collectibles and the prices for those almost never and i mean almost never go down they're usually you know on the rise year after year after year so if i set aside a bunch of postcards you know the, the postcard market's not going anywhere it's been there i've sold postcards 20 Geez, over 20 years we've messed with postcards in one way, shape, or form. Obviously, I didn't know super way back in the day, um, but these days, you know, postcards just keep going up and up, and I don't see any end to it because there's limited number and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it just depends on what you got. If you sell what I do, it doesn't matter if I buy it in massive bulk. You know, a Santa Claus die cut's going to sell this year, next year. They sold five or ten years ago. It's going to sell five or ten years in, into the future, too. So I'm not worried about it. It's just like an investment. And as I say, and, and other people who I've had, like Dom, Primetime Treasure Hunter, and stuff like that, I pay almost nothing for it. And when I buy a big bunch of group of stuff, I can usually sell just a couple things out of that entire purchase, sometimes one, and get all my money back, make a profit, and then pay enough to list these items for quite some time. Um, I'll show you some in-depth in this, but this is a haul I got. These are just clothing buttons. There's some military in here. There's some ladies' buttons in here, quite a few. Some of these go back to about 1820. Um, there's probably, geez, I, I wouldn't even begin to tell. For those in Australia like Duncan, there's some Australian buttons in here too. There's World War One. There's 1880s, 70s, there's um, Victorian buttons, um, just a bunch of stuff in here too. This is the kind of stuff that, that I like. There's probably 300 listings in that bag that I just showed you. Easy, easy to list, easy to ship, easy to do anything with. You know, if you know how to look around too, there's auctions you can go and get these kind of things. Um, again, local live auctions. You can bid on a lot of the auctions that, that uh, you see online online you don't have to be there for every one of them you can put absentee bids in you can do live uh, online bids as well too or you can even do a phone one there's a couple auctions that I still do a phone conversation I literally have somebody on the phone at the auction company uh, while my bids are come up they call you like uh, 10 minutes or so or 15 minutes ahead of time 
before your items are coming up and they'll just okay they'll usually get your information um, if you haven't supplied it already if you don't know this um, you know you don't have to go somewhere to do an auction most of them will ship it out and if it's a good enough deal it's worth doing as, as that way too Shipping is the only aspect. You're paying more because the auction house is going to bill you to wrap the items if you didn't know that. So, you know, I've I've bought from any any form of, of purchasing something, I've done it. I don't, auctioned online, local, whatever. You know, I've had I've had employees even go and bid on things when I couldn't get to a couple or they weren't taking phone bids and stuff. So I might be at one and somebody else could be at another auction. You know, it's the only way to kill two birds with one stone, because just like going to estate sales, you can't go to, you know, more than one at a time. And if it's they're both on the same day, it's really hard to get to, you know, the second one before it's irrelevant. You know, once it, once it's opened up and, you know, a couple dozen people come in there, a lot of the real high dollar or quick flip stuff items are usually gone. So, you know, I always can find something at an estate sale, but, you know, hopefully you guys are the same way. Uh, if you, if it's not, you're not that, that at that level now, you know, you're just going to have to take some time and get there. There's no difference in me. Everybody's, you know, we're all the same. I, I just spent a lot of time doing this. This is all I do. So for those of you who are doing a full-time job and sourcing and, and can't, don't have the time to learn it all, it just takes time. There's nothing else. There's no other big secret to learning what I sell or what anybody sells, whether it be clothing or books or video games or anything. There's no secret at all, none whatsoever. It's just taking the time to do it, um, you know. Anyway, and this is these buttons were a big score. I scored um, some video games, which I'll have a uh, video coming up. I spent 25 bucks on some really nice video games. Um, some of them go, go back in, in the day. They're not the, the newer ones. Um, but it was a big score for, for that type of thing. I don't mess with video games as much these days, but kids kids will probably play them, and then we're just going to end up selling them or something. So uh, anyway, but they're nice they're nice games. It's a pretty good stack of them for 25 bucks. So anyway, just other things that I look for. Let's see who else is on. Nancy, how are you doing? Had a great sale today of 350 so thank you again for all the great info. It's made all the difference. What what was it you sold, if you don't mind me asking, Nancy? You don't have to say it if you don't want to. I'm just curious. Wubba lubba dub dub, how are you doing? Good afternoon. I guess it still could be afternoon, depending on where you are at. I like these Thursdays, 4 o'clock. Four up, so you are in California. I can actually make them. Mr. Bearded has his show at, like, same my time on Early to Rise, but not that darn early. Mr. Bearded, are you, I don't know if you're talking about uh, Bearded Picker, maybe? Scott, hey Rob, how are you doing? I saw your, uh, I didn't get a chance to respond to anything, but I saw your um, uh, Smothers Brothers uh, on that. I believe that was you, Rob. Um, I don't know all those era. Probably if I saw them on their own show, Clips and Color, I might have recognized them. Um, you know, that's from the uh, movie film uh, video that I just had up. I think that was yesterday's video. Hey, Carl, how are you doing? How was your vacation, Carl? Hopefully it was good. Uh, Karen, welcome, Karen. Things are going well. The wife is not feeling very well, so I don't know if she'll be on or not. She is not right here at this moment, so I don't know if she'll come in or what. Uh, Richard, how are you doing, Richard? Hope things are going well for you as well. And Charles, welcome to... Hopefully everything is good on your behalf. I If... I'm just curious on this, um, sales-wise. I keep hearing, you know, mixed results. I have probably a good 30% of the po folks that um, leave comments are talking about good sales. Um, the rest aren't talking about sales or it's miserable sales. I'm just curious how many people are having good sales right now. Ours are up. In fact, I'll pop a screenshot on Instagram uh, tomorrow on our percentages um, just so you can kind of see where we're at versus other people. Depends on what you sell, of course. Um, I sell stuff that there's no seasonality to it to some extent because it's collectibles. People collect. They don't care what time of year it is. They don't care at all. It, it, we do get increased in sales in fourth quarter as well, but it's not as big of an increase. Well, it, it depends, I guess. Um, in collectible-wise, it's not as big as you would expect on like wholesale Wholesale stuff is always a big increase, and, and our Amazon pages go off the off the chain usually during the holidays. I got a bunch of special merchandise this year for holidays, so we'll see how that goes, too. Uh, Wubba Lubba, funny that the topic is fourth quarter. I'm actually taking photos and working on some fall, October, winter stuff. 
I had forgotten had wooed. That's another thing. Now, I, I keep track or try to, but we mix up sometimes. It'll go in the wrong bin or something, and we'll turn up something that uh, I completely had no clue I even had. I don't know where I got it at or, or anything else like that, and I found a big box the other day um, of smalls, you know, quarter items I probably paid. I got a box or usually if we buy a bunch of like quarter items out of little baskets on the counters of shops and stuff, most of the Goodwills have those baskets. Even Savers has some. We don't have Savers, but they, that's what they have. And um, I just usually pay a quarter for these stuff and they'll just end up in big totes and eventually we'll get to it. Um, usually I'll sell the, the quick move high dollar stuff out of whatever purchase we make. So if I go to a, a store or something and I buy 50 items, hopefully with all luck there's a good item in there I can sell that one item get my money back for everything and then so I have nothing tied into it and with collectibles that's possible probably like 95 percent of the time with what I buy I can buy a big lot of just junk basically and just sell a couple items and get all my money back I mean that's literally how it usually goes at least for for me on that and I know other people are the same way like Duncan and and stuff like that too and I get other folks that comment the, the exact same way Dom primetime treasure is the same way treasure hunter he has the same type of of experience as I do so I know it's not just me I'm not anything different than anybody else again I've just taken a long time to do this but let, let's touch on a couple topics here. These are questions from another video uh, live show that I didn't get to that was left down in the bottom of one of them. And again, I, I just pick, pick some random ones. I'm going to try and answer some here and there. The, the, the comment was that they couldn't believe that uh, something from 1870 they bought for a lot of money wasn't worth anything. Um, just because something's old doesn't mean it's worth anything. That's a, a very bad misconception, on even on coins. You can get a, a pillar dollar, you know, from like 1789, and it's not worth a fortune because there were so many of them minted. Uh, pillar dollars is Spanish, like real, you know, a piece of eight or something like that. It's basically the size of a silver dollar. I, I'll show you one maybe in another video if somebody's interested. So I got a, a few sitting around here. They're they're not super scarce. You know, an average condition one might only go for 50 to 100 bucks. You know, so just because something says 1789, 1756. A early old date on it doesn't mean it's worth a fortune. Um, just because it was printed uh, during the Civil War doesn't mean it was worth a fortune. You know, like newspapers from the Civil War may only go for 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks. They made hundreds of them, thousands of them, tens of thousands of them, unless it's some little small town. Southern ones would go for a little more, obviously, because they didn't have the, the resources that were up north. So, I mean, don't think just because it's got something old on it or it's got an old date or it's a jacket or something from World War II or something that it's worth a fortune. And, and the other thing uh, tied to that, just because you're seeing something and it states a uh, little tag on it that the person selling it wrote out that states this is from World War I worn by an officer or whatever it says, whatever, or a toy that belonged to such and such, don't trust them on that, that piece of paper. Don't trust that. Know your stuff. Don't trust somebody to tell you what that thing is. Look it up. If you can't find it, you can't verify it, you're either taking a chance or, or, or you're passing it by. Those are your, your two options. So don't trust somebody else. They want to sell it. I'm not uh, saying they would have malicious intent. They may have been given that same information and it's not correct. I don't know how many times I've had people say, well, this is from here and it belonged to this person and they were in this unit or in the military or they were the fire department, all these other types of things. And they'll give me information at estate sales or family sales or things like that. And I look at the thing and there's no way it is what they say it is. I mean, it wasn't made in the right time frame. These are things that are passed down, you know, generation to generation. And that information is the least reliable you can get is word of mouth and that's a proven fact so when people tell you that don't trust their judgment on what it is look it up don't just pay it because they say it's something again it doesn't mean that they're intentionally trying to mislead you they just don't know it may not know it of course there's going to be those that are going to tell you what you want to hear so that you'll buy it you know that that's all tied in here because one one question let off another one talking about being taken and, and you know it's not always intentional 
You know, I see stuff on eBay quite often, and, and it's not what it says it is. And the person obviously doesn't know. If you look at what they're selling, it has nothing to do with the category item that they've misrepresented or mislisted or mistitled. Um, you know, it's not intentional, I guess, is the point. So anyway, now eBay payments. I had a lot of questions and in, in people talking about eBay, eBay payments. I haven't had any issues with eBay payments on the other store. I am not touching it on this store uh, because they are individual items. I don't sell to the big mass quantities at, at the same time or anything like that in this store. Now, I've had other people in eBay uh, themselves state that it will help improve your sales by switching over to it because it um, gives them more options to pay. So all those folks without PayPal and all these other options here... Um, I haven't heard anybody come back on that. If if if, the, if you've had good responses after you've switched and you have switched in the comments section, not in the live chat, but in the comments section, please just say yes, it's it's improved my sales or no, it hasn't. Please give me some feedback here. I'm really asking for somebody's the the feedback as much as I can get on this, just because I'm looking into it too, and I I can't show any benefit um, personally. Now I bought some items merchandise or not merchandise some um uh shoot what is it um uh, plastic bags off of ebay um they're 10 by 14 bags and then i bought some 14 by 12 bags clear bags two mil thousand count uh, lots and, and i got my storage video i'll show you you know some of those quantities and the cheapest ones to get on that too this weekend you'll see that but i buy those offline um and I had to pay with the new payment system for the first time because I don't buy hardly anything off of eBay. So it was the first time I had to. And then the boxes, too, if you get the free boxes to settle up the the taxes and stuff on that, you have to pay the difference And um, if, you know, you go over the, the amount. And, um, you know, so you had to use the, the eBay payment system as well. It wasn't – it's not anywhere near as complicated – to pay with the new payment as setting up a PayPal account. I will say that. So if if it's ease of helping people who find your listing, let's say, on Google, well, that's what I'm saying. We're going to switch into Google here a little bit. It, it will help them in that case because they can just pull out a charge card and not even worry about PayPal at all. You know, and, and it's, you can use secure card and all that kind of stuff. So Maybe it's going to be a plus. I, I, I'm, I'm not convinced of that yet, but, you know, again, feedback. Leave some comments in the comment section, not in the chat for this one here. I want to be able to just come back here and compile this. I'm probably going to ask this again in, in my Facebook group, Instagram, and the whole works and see what we can get as a consensus on this. I'm, I'm really curious because if they're going to promote this as that being a big help for us, I want to see some results from it. So, you know... Don't charge us more and then tell us this is going to happen and then nothing comes of it. So, you know, that's my look at it. So, again, leave some comments in the comment section after the video's done or, or stop and put some down there. Um, the other thing is tying to this somewhat too. The whole aspect on payments and making things easier is when they're pulling people in from off-site. More and more of sales are coming from off-site, which you can look that information up on eBay now if you weren't aware of that. So um, and there's third-party apps that will do that for you as well. So if you're interested, maybe we'll go into some of that in another video too. Again, if you're interested in that, leave some comments down in the comment section also. Um, leading into this, refreshing your listings and things like that. I had somebody else again go back and forth with me that, that if you refresh and edit your listings and not do anything, it's going to... Uh, clear out your listings and all this other kind of stuff. I, there's no technical IT basis for that at all that I can see anywhere. And I have an IT background in networking, system administration, design. I also did database construction administration. It's all one one uh, degree. It's a, it's an AS. And I have that as well as the, the BA and MA and all that stuff. But the point is I studied that for you know two plus years. I did it professionally, uh, and I still help people on the side for a Christian organization as well as a thrift store. So I, I can't see any benefit of doing that in any way, shape, or form. The only thing I can tell you is chances are it's hurting you because you're not going to rank anywhere on an SEO search at all. And if, if you pay attention and you type something in that you're looking for, just go do a blind Google search, clear out your web browser history completely. Do do this. I would honestly recommend everybody doing this. Clear out your browsers. Not right now, obviously, but clear out your browsers. Clear everything out. Get a fresh um, uh, Chrome page, a fresh Chrome page, and then search for something. 
And you're going to be surprised how many items are Etsy and eBay and Amazon. It's, it's a broad mix that shows up. It's not some random stuff anymore. eBay stuff is showing up in higher rankings. Etsy was higher than, than eBay when you did some type of searches. But nowadays, eBay is right up there on a lot of the items that I, that I look for. In fact, in many cases, it's the very first item. Many people don't understand or don't know where the best places to look for certain items. You know, that's that's just a fact. There's a large chunk of the population that's like that, that that's not a eBay or an Amazon or anything like that. And their first first thought is, let's just search for it, go to a, a browser and search for it. This is how it works. You know, your grandparents would do this. Even some of your parents probably do this. Younger folks, probably not. They'll know a site that they want to go to because of their friends and stuff like that. But a large chunk of the population searches for whatever you are selling on Google, on a Chrome search. You know, it's a fact. You can look at the numbers. A lot of people, in fact, there'll probably be somebody who shouted out, you might have 30% of their eBay sales on eBay from Google, straight from Google, pulled in from a, a standardized search. That's where eBay's heading. I mean, I, I can't, I can type in my items and find a lot of, and I mean a ton of mine, on the very first search page if it's something specific I'm looking for. You know, and, and that's on a cleared out, you know, cash gone, you know, history gone on a fresh, brand new open browser with no information tied to it, no history, no nothing. It's pulling up that kind of stuff. So you can look this stuff up. And if you refresh it, not that it really does anything if you do the, the edits and, and everything. It, there's no proof as well. And just because you sell it doesn't mean it wouldn't have sold anyway. The only way to do something, a test like that, is to have two stores doing the exact same thing, one one way and one another, so you have a base to compare it to, to prove, yes, it's higher or yes, it's not. There's there's only two options, but you have to have something to compare it to. Just because you sold something and you, you did one little thing and it, you sold something doesn't mean that those two are related to each other at all. That item could have sold no matter what you did. It doesn't mean a thing. I mean, I, I can't express that enough, and too many people think about doing that. And if you're doing that like every week, like I hear people doing to help get these sales that you think you're going to get from it, you're crushing your other sales, which could be 30% of your business. And I'm not exaggerating. I am fully not exaggerating. There's reports out there right this minute talking about this, not eBay, not me, not other YouTubers. These are like industrial reports and industrial journals talking about these SEO searches and how these items are ranking now and, and how the, the market's moving and changing. I mean, there's it's it's just a fact. I mean, I wish everybody could to, could you know dig into this as well and and see that more. So it's you know anyway, if you do those those options and refreshing them and doing these one day auctions or whatever you're doing, you're killing your ranking. That's all I can tell you because my sales are like 28 percent up from last year, a horrendous amount, more so than than I would ever expect. I hadn't I, I didn't have a summer. I had no summer drop off. And again, somebody's going to call me out and say, that's not true. That's not true. I, I, I 100 percent, you know, hand to God can tell you that we didn't have a summer. I had no summer drop off, no, no fooling or nothing else. You know, it depends on what you sell. Duncan's another good example in here. He doesn't have it. You don't have it if you sell the right items. You know, it took us eight years to get here. But, yeah, we're here. And, you know, I've taken advantage of, of these areas. So anyway, let's go to some more questions here. And I'm going to show out something that I acquired. I've got two haul items or two uh, bolo items here I want to talk about. Um, should be something interesting, something you might not have had a thought on. But uh, anyway, let's pop down here. Uh, what are sales? Welcome. Carolina Picks, welcome as well. Larry, good evening. Larry Portals of the Past, huh? Let's pop up again because my feed just totally disappeared. Uh, let's see here. Auctions by my great finds for you. Welcome. Debbie, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. David, welcome back, David. Hey, J.I., how are you doing? Video up tonight in Patreon as soon as I get off the channel, too. So just FYI. Jason Blake, how are you doing? There's Rich. How are you doing, Rich Sanders? Uh, yeah, and I'm going to be on Patreon, too, and all the questions should be taken care of first thing in the morning. It's been a real long day. I had both kids to deal with with school and everything else. After this week, I have a set schedule again. This week was just all over the place because of school shopping and, you know, new clothes, all that kind of stuff, and books and fees, and um, they had to buy codes and things like that, too. So, you know, quite a few trips out here and there helping helping both kids out. 
Uh, let's see here. Frontier Flipper, welcome. Well, welcome back from Calgary. Hustle and Grind Calgary. Good evening as well. Cornelius, how are you doing? Well, thank you very kindly. I really appreciate the comments. Applebee's Attic Treasures, welcome. Lee, how are you doing? I believe you are the same Lee that's in Patreon, I would say. Chris Austin, ah, there goes my feet again. Hang on. Well, thank you, Carolina Picks. I appreciate the $5 super chat. I, I really honestly and sincerely do. Um, a lot of people, you know, don't realize how much time goes into any of this that we do. Um, there's a lot of time and effort involved into creating these videos. If it's a 20 minute video, you've got uh, 20 minutes to shoot it, at least 10, 15 minutes to set it up minimum. It's got to be edited, which sometimes could take 40 minutes. And then it's rewatched again on top of it to make sure that the edit's okay. You got 25 to an hour to uh, compile it so you can actually use it as a video. And then it's still got to be uploaded. I mean, there's a lot to it. Then you've got to add the links and all that stuff. It takes a lot of time. I, I do honestly appreciate that. Thank you very kindly, Carolina Pickers. Or Carolina Picks, I do apologize. Uh, let me pop back down here because my feed is still all over. Hang on just a second here. Chris got a Christmas tree pin today at an estate sale. Hopefully it's a decent brand. Um, they don't all have to be branded. I have a video on that that I just put up. I got a lot of good feedback on that. I love the costume jewelry because usually it's really cheap. And I can, even if it sets for a while, I don't care. A listing for me is like two cents a month. For a quarter, I can list an item all year round. You know, for an entire year, 12 months, it's a quarter to list one item. And if you pay a dollar for something in a year, you only have a dollar twenty-five into that item. And chances are I bought a bunch of stuff. Again, I sold a couple items out of the lot. I got all my money back. And this is what I do for everything I sell pretty much. And I'm not exaggerating. You see the quantity I have, you know, it's, it's, it's just insane how you can get this stuff. And again, it took me a while to get to this point. And I worked very, very hard. This is not an easy job. So don't just think you're going to walk into this. I've I've earned through sweat and, and, and you know, actual work the, the right to, to be where I sit, I think. You know, I, I've I've earned it. I've I've done this all myself, honestly. It's it's a lot of work. So I see a lot of people, you know, get discouraged and quit. You know, it's a lot of work. Don't watch a video and, and them tell you it's easy. You're just going to sell this or sell that, and you're going to be rolling. And I'm going to sell 50 pairs of this this week, and I'm going to quit my job. It, it doesn't work that like that. I'm telling you right now. It, it, it took us uh, many years of, you know, living on the bottom bottom rung, basically. You know, uh, kids eating good and no new It was just an awful experience to some extent, but it it, it, it was fine to to. I guess uh, I saw where we were going with it, I guess I should say. So, you know, it was just the, the necessary struggle to get to where we were at. So, anyway. Uh, let's see here. Well, glad to have you for your first live show here. Welcome again, Applebee's Attic. Karen, welcome. How are you doing? Florida. I lived in Florida, Mount Dora. Uh, flea market on Monday mornings used to be a very good place to score items. I'd go there with a flashlight at like 4.30 in the morning while the vendors uh, were showing up. And that was usually the best time to purchase stuff. I could get out of there before the sun even came up on some, some occasions and walk out with enough stuff and ran out of money, basically, you know. That was always a good, especially when they had the uh, Renninger's Big Antique Fair out there, which usually filled the entire Mount Dora area. I mean, from end to end, it was just an awesome place. Home Thrifters. What is Patreon and how does it work? Patreon is a, it's another platform. Um, just type in Patreon and um, it's a paid paid service, basically. Um, if you pay, my my most expensive one is nine ninety nine, and and you get access to all the content on there. There's hours, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of video. There's video seventy seven just went up, and most of the videos are at least like twenty five minutes or longer. Um, there's some videos that are like forty five minutes to an hour. There's many that are two parts nowadays, which equates to about an hour just on a specific bolo. I'll go into. Stuff that I don't discuss on here. Um, lately, it's 78 records we're talking about. Um, you know, and, but I'm going into depth. I'm I'm giving the, the 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 insider information, I guess, from someone um, like me who does this for a living. 
A lot of people don't talk or or give out the knowledge on records. I'm going to talk about stamps. I do toys. Anything that I do on here, I go into better detail, and then I give out like insider stuff that I don't discuss on here as well. That's basically the gist of it. Um, the 9.99 gets the videos. There's I think a 4.99, and then a just a dollar 99 to just help out the channel. Um, it's just more content. Again, there's there's 70 some uh, 77 videos I think. There's other links. There's videos from you know a few other creators and things like that discussing um, thinking outside the box. Um, there's lists and things like that too. So anyway, it, it's just another nothing somebody has to do or anything like that. But it's just more information. It's all content. I'm not going to guarantee anybody's going to make a fortune. Um, but but again, anybody who's watched the channel for any length of time you're probably finding the stuff otherwise you wouldn't be watching the channel anymore i'm i'm telling you honest stuff here this is all stuff that you see me personally selling in my possession that i sell and routinely get um i'll also tell some talk about um where to find some of the stuff i guess too but um you can check out and just kind of see how patreon is too here on youtube patreon has a page and they'll just show you what patreon is as well too everybody has a different type of patreon page i guess you know there, there's all kinds of groups and things like that as well too on patreon so um they're improving it it's not super they've got some well i shouldn't say it's not super it, it's a decent site they just need to improve stuff they've just signed a deal with vimeo i think that's how it's pronounced i don't i don't use it yet but i probably will if they're including it um, and it's going to be an integration with their platform so you can do more than just share videos. I'm hoping, um, you know, they, they do other stuff too. They have, you know, pages and they do Instagram and they promote and stuff like that too. So anyway, well, thank you very kindly, Karen. I appreciate that. Karen Henderson for the $5 super chat. Uh, again, this literally helps to, to give me the ability to do this. Um, if you don't know, or you haven't been on this channel before, I have employees. So, I, there's nine of us here basically working. I sell on nine platforms, just coincidence, the same number. Um, you know, so we're a business as opposed to a YouTube channel to some extent. My primary goal and what we do and make 99% of my money comes from eBay, Amazon, Etsy, and all those kind of places. This is a sideline. I just talk about what I do. Um, so, again, I do appreciate that, Karen, very, very uh, much as well as the rest of us here do too. Um, I do spend a lot of time on these videos. Um, I'm trying to improve them, you know, constantly and give you better, more relevant in, information. Um, you know, I mean, those who've watched the channel, as I said, you're finding this stuff. I, I'm sure of it because I get enough comments on an almost daily basis on somebody found this and never would have thought about it if it wasn't for some of the videos that we have out here. And they're, you're selling it for good money. So, again, I'm not trying to, to brag it or anything. I'm... I'm just I talk about what I know. I don't talk about clothing and stuff. Some video games I know, some other things I know. I know vintage units and you know anything music related, sound equipment and you know anything like that. Anything media, um anything comics and books. I've done it all. I've sold clothing as I've said before for quite some time we've sold you know scanned books and the whole works. So anyway, let let me show out a couple bolos here. Now I'll get back to the questions in just a minute. And again, I didn't forget my, my pad here. Now, I go to estate sales occasionally. Anything at an estate sale is fair game for me. Um, unfortunately, I don't think this is going to show up now that I think about it. I'm, you're not going to get to see the colors on this. This was an early stained glass window. Um, unfortunately, yeah, you're not going to see it. Even where it's uh, not uh, green, it's still is funky well i'm sorry about that but the point of it is though that this is a vintage one this is an original one i took this out of a house it was mounted into a door that was mounted into a uh, like a entertainment well it wasn't entertainment i guess maybe like a maybe a library shelf at one time the door was broken i asked him how much i paid five bucks for that thing it's 1880s 1890s all the way i would say it's handmade from you know every single piece cut you can see the marks it, it's it's a vintage piece how do i find stuff stuff like that I, i'm going to give you the biggest secret in the world on this you ask even if it's not for sale who cares if there's a price on something who cares if it's not in an area that they have stuff for sale if i can see it i'm going to ask if i think i can make some money on it 
That's your number one secret on that. Just ask if it's for sale. I've had people ask in a car I had sitting out front that had no for sale sign, asking if I'm going to buy it on several occasions. It was a it was a, a older um, uh, shoot a Buick Regal that we had decked out, uh, seventy eight. But anyway, the point is that just ask. I don't know how many times I'm at places that the stuff wasn't for sale, or they didn't have it out because they didn't think it would sell, and they pull out stuff because I did the one thing that no one else did until I walked into that place, which was ask if they had this, ask if that was for sale ask just ask them if they've got anything else there's people that that took this one step further and and there's a friend of mine who suggested and he does it i just can't draw myself to do it he's got shirts that say i buy this for you know insane amounts of money and things like that on his shirt so when he's walking around at one of these flea markets or or you know uh sales and stuff people see that and they'll question him because most of the people that are at these sales are people that either buy or sell anyway so, I mean, that's just an insider. If you're not asking, you're already missing out because someone like me is going to come up behind you and ask the owner of the house, even if I have to track somebody down. It's just like when you're at Walmart or something and you're looking for RA items and you don't see them out. I always ask. I always ask. If it's not there on the shelf, I ask because sometimes they're terrible on stocking the shelves in some stores. So, anyway, asking... It does not going to work all the time. There's probably a good 40% of the time, though, that I get something that wasn't for sale that second day, even sometimes the last day, because it wasn't in a sale area or someone just didn't ask. I don't care if it's connected to a building or not. If it's, if it's removable and they're going to sell it to me, I'm going to take it off. I keep tools in my car, tape measure, tool, heavy magnet, um, at least one loop, which is almost always my lighted loop, so... It's just something you got to do. Just like carrying boxes and packing material in my car if I'm going sourcing and I think I'm going to find any records. I always carry something to pack up 78s and records or, or things like that. I always do. I always keep some, some uh, bubble wrap or something in my car if I find ashtrays or, or anything that holds value. So this is, again, planning ahead. But stained glass windows, I will send this through the mail with no problem at all. It's not as fragile as you would think if you wrap them correctly. So, you know, this is a quick five bucks. I should be able to get at least 60 or 70 bucks for this. I would imagine it's early. It's got the wavy glass. It's got bubbles and it. it's just what you want to find. You can obviously see if you saw it in person, it's a real nice one. There was another one that was all busted up on the other door. It was a double door on one of them. And then there was another section that had some more busted up ones. This is the only one that, uh, was usable and it has one little break in it but no big deal so the point is that they obviously knew that what are they going to do with one decent window other than sell it i took it off i busted the rest of the wood off they didn't care how it took it to get off the house is going to be you know gutted from what i what i understood too so the new buyer who was already going to be buying the house planned on remodeling the whole thing so it, it doesn't matter if it's for sale or not asking is the easiest thing you can do to find more material if you're at a garage sale and they don't have records out, I don't know how many times I've asked, oh, we didn't bring them today, or we didn't think of, oh, I got some in the basement, oh, I got some in the attic. I don't go to many garage sales, but when I do go to garage sales, I ask that question of every single person I see. Do you have any old toys? Do you have any comic books? I know people hand out the flyers. I don't usually do the flyers and stuff like that. I don't want it to, to look like I am big, big, heavy into it um, personally. Because, you know, then the price goes up on you usually. They'll, they'll think you're going to make a fortune on them. You know, uh, just play it mild-mannered is what I do. And I come out with better results in my personal opinion. Uh, the results speak for themselves. Um, why don't we hit some more like buttons there if you haven't hit the like button. If you are enjoying the conversation, uh, I'll get some more questions. I'm going to show you another bolo item here um, that I see people walk by all the time. And it's something, it's not worth a fortune, but you're not going to pay much. I'll show that in just a few moments here. Let's go down here. Uh, Karen, again, welcome. Chris, welcome from Florida as well. What our sales is from Florida as well. Fort Myers area for Debbie. Welcome, Debbie. I have been down to Fort Myers once or twice, and that has been about it. Uh, West Palm, I really like. They used to have a, the Festival of the Masters in West Palm, and I used to go down there, and I would uh, set up with somebody, actually, occasionally. Michelle, well, welcome. Hopefully everything is going good with you as well. 
lovely treasures welcome from connecticut i have been to connecticut as well i spent some time up in boston we stayed in saugus and then we stayed at the house of seven gables for two whole nights woo um it was really an interesting experience honestly i don't know if it's still a bed and breakfast but the house of seven gables used to be a bed and breakfast when we were up there brimfield's the bomb always recommend anybody if they haven't been to brimfields and seen a brimfields to hit brimfields without a doubt if you get up in that area i actually flew in early just to go to brimfields because brimfields is the bomb i mean i bought so much stuff there that we ended up sending boxes and boxes of stuff home i spent we actually flew up there geez two days early to do saturday and sunday at brimfields and i wished i could have made that friday because i probably missed some really good deals Dan Lewis from PA. I went through Pittsburgh not too long ago. I'm in Pasco County. Pasco County's not too bad. Been there myself once or twice. Hey, Tara, how are you doing? Your second... I would say if you're doing your, your thing and your numbers are going up right now, your fourth quarter should be improving. I talk about projections. And a lot of people don't know what their sales are going to be at the end of the month and stuff like this. I do projections. I, I'm My projections are like almost dead on month by month by month by month by month. I can almost always tell you what I'm going to do before the month even starts, what I should do next month. These numbers stay pretty darn solid, straight. If you, I was a regional manager. I was a general manager too, but as a regional, I would compare store numbers and things like that. You, you can almost write, you know, set your clock by how sales go in many industries. And this is just one of those industri industries that you can do that. Yeah, I mean, I know what I'm going to do almost every single day of the week. It's it's pretty close to the same numbers. Coincidence or not, and I'm not the only one who has these same numbers, and I'm not the only one who does projections. Every morning I look at what we're projected to do, and I don't use eBay's numbers. God knows I don't use those because if you look at what you're up and what you're down, they're, they're not a good judge on some things. Now, so if you just want to know the top two categories you sell on, that's what eBay's good at. They're only going to give you on, you know, if you're up from last, uh, year over last or month over last, they're only going to give you your top two selling items. If you have a ton of stuff like we do, it, it's a good judge on those categories for me, and I do use that for that. But overall, for what I'm going to sell at the end of this month, I'm using my own numbers. And I there's a number sheet I've got in a couple of videos up here. It's in my Patreon group as well, too. Projections work. You know, I've already got numbers for the fourth quarter, what I should have in on the fourth quarter, you know, and, and I'm usually optimistic. So at the end of the day, usually my numbers are short of what I actually sell. It's I'm actually underselling myself, I guess you could say. It's a way to keep track. So if, if my sales also need to take a dive and you're only looking at eBay and, and keeping track with the sales, it's, it's a, it's a, a free-floating 28 days. You can't separate a month easily without clicking some buttons on eBay. So I always pop, pop mine into a different sheet. It's there for tax purposes. You know, all that stuff's just popped in there. That's what I do. Um, and it always, you know, I always know what's going to happen. And if we start to slow down or the sales are there, I can just pop in there and, and send some offers to watchers. I said I was going to do it and I still haven't done it again since, um, I think it's been like three and a half, almost four weeks since I sent even one offer to my watchers and I got like 1400 listings that I can send offers to don't do it I haven't done it and I know people say you can do them in big bulk lots but I wouldn't do that because uh, it's it's judged by the item themselves I'll sit there maybe for a few hours and send out some maybe in the next month or so um, we're gonna buy another car and I don't want to have that affect any bank account so we might just do that um, I, I guess maybe next month we were talking about it but Anyway, and we still are looking into, if things keep going this way, um, into a warehouse maybe at the end of the year. Just FYI. But I'll, I'll share the journey with that, and I'll show you what we're looking for and all that, if it gets to that point. Let's pop up to some more questions, then I'll show you another bolo. Designer store more. Welcome. I've been to Denver. I didn't mind Denver at all. And yeah, I'm stockpiling for winter. That's what the designer store and more is saying. And that's exactly right. As I said again, stuff is cheaper in the summer because it's so much more of it available. You buy when it's cheap. That's why I bought for Christmas this coming up year, last December. And even in November, I was buying Christmas for this year and setting it aside if that's what it takes. It's cheap. It's on clearance. It's stuff that'll still turn around. That They're name brand products that have been around for a long time. 
I scored a whole bunch of My Little Pony stuff. I sold some, a, a bunch of them. I got all my money back. And then I stopped because I know I can get more money for them this time around. Maybe I should have held on to them all, but I wanted to recoup the funds on it, you know, uh, quick enough. And I, you know, made good profit even selling them right away. So it's just a perfect example of stuff like that. And that would be an RA item that I'm talking about. Plus wholesale, we do that with as well. Hey, Dan Sweeps, how are you doing? Marikex7, good evening, good evening to you. I am in Denver, too, but in North Carolina. So you're a North Carolina person, but you're from Denver would be my guess. Barb's Odds and Ends, welcome. Southern California, I have been to Whittier and that area there. Um, that's the only place in California that I really spent much time in because I worked there in the uh, Whittier area for, I don't know, I, I took like five, five flights up there and I stayed there like a week or two at a shot. It's for a company I work for. Riffwood Thrifter, welcome, welcome. The winner of the contest from a little while ago. And again, I'm going to have a couple more contests coming out. If you're not following my Instagram, you'll miss out on that. The next contest will be something given away on Instagram. So uh, again, that's what we got going there. So uh, let me just get some more questions so we get some more questions out of the way. Charles, I'd love to see a Patreon video on FBA only. How to price, how to get ungated in more areas, all FBA I don't do um, that much FBA right this minute, in all honesty. Um, there are a few select items that I deal with with FBA, and the only way I could do a full-fledged FBA video would be to show my items, which I really don't want to do. I guess that's my biggest consideration. If, if you don't do FBA and you're not an Amazon person, all somebody needs to have is your store name and that's it. And they can sync your entire your entire business on Amazon. They can file a false um, claim against you on your items there, literally. And this happens constantly. I, in fact, I just covered this partially in a video the other day. I am extremely hesitant to share anything on my Amazon account. Is the only reason I haven't put together a specific uh, FBA video. I've showed you basics on some of the Amazon in Patreon. There is one that does go into into um, Amazon. But again, I've, I've got to be extremely careful. There's a lot of haters. There's a lot of, of trolls out there that would be happy to sink uh, someone's store. It happens all the time. Just type in, um, I've, I can't, there's a name they call it, but somebody else just did a video. Maybe it was uh, Scott Bearded Picker or Shane Rise and Grind. I don't remember which one, but one of those guys had a video on other people sinking it. If you read one of the articles in my video talking about Amazon, their, their troubles and having to admit that they had a counterfeit issue. Read one of those articles, and it literally in that video, you can see the title of the article. That article talks literally about other sellers tanking their competition by doing these false claims. And Amazon can just shut you down. They're not going to investigate. you got to go through hoops to get back on. And many people just end up having to spend like $1,500 with an Amazon service, a service that will go through the process. Nothing is easy. And Charles, as you know... Um, on trying to get on gated on things uh, because you know we have talked on that as well you and me Charles I I it's so it's a maze Amazon's a maze there's no one hand doesn't know what the other hand's doing every finger on the same hand doesn't even know what the hand's doing at Amazon in some aspects because I was in conversation with with some other folks and Amazon didn't even have a clue on a category that's in Amazon or on Amazon. They didn't even think a category that's a category was a category. I mean, it's just insane on, on that. And one department tells you one thing and another department tells you another. They don't, neither department knows what the other department does. You can't, you can't judge it. And I can't trust to give the information out. And I really wouldn't mind doing it at all. I promise you, but I'm worried about being tanked is my biggest, biggest problem. We've already been, tried to be sabotaged on, on eBay already. And unfor unfortunately, I won that one and, and it was fine. And eBay saw and they actually kicked the other person off. So the person that tried to try to uh, stink us on some, some things actually lost. And not only that, they lost their money and their eBay account. Um, so anyway, eBay does, get, uh, does do better on 
um, looking at you know your your feedback rating on on the channel or on their their platform now. So if you're 100 percent feedback they do tend to offer you better stuff i'm telling you though so if if you think feedback's not important it's important in so many ways including the fact that you know they're gonna they are gonna stand up for you maybe they'll let the person who's trying to rip you off keep the item or whatever but usually there's at least a courtesy refund for your behalf or something along that line that's what they've done for us on, on several occasions you know, so I mean, I know that that this stuff matters. So you know, to me, my Amazon feedback is a hundred percent, so much more important. On eBay, you might get you know forty, fifty percent of people. Maybe it's higher than that for some folks that leave feedback. On Amazon, it's like one out of a hundred or one out of eight hundred, maybe even items that sell that you'll get feedback from it. It takes a lot to get feedback on Amazon, and if you get a couple bad ones, it just it can sink you. So. Um, you know, if I can figure a way or, or anything like that or find some other, other source or, or way to do that, I'll be happy to do that, um, Charles. But again, that's that's my biggest issue is is my 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 safety. I, again, I don't make my money at all um, from YouTube. I make it from selling, so I can't jeopardize 99% of my business on that. Um, it's just not it's just not practical for me to, to risk that. You can't have more than one account on Amazon in the same business name. So, you know, we've got a couple of businesses, but the, the point is I don't want to have to switch all kinds of stuff around and all that stuff. It's just not, it's just not, just, it, it worries me too much, I guess. I'm, I'm, I'm too um, safety oriented to, to, to touch on that. Again, if I can figure out a way, it, it's been on my list, but I just, I don't know how to do it without showing you the items. Maybe I can create a dummy one. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Um and and I don't use Amazon either to do. Uh, I've got third party apps now, so I don't use Amazon to do FBA at all. Just FYI, so all my items go through Cellbrite. So um, you know that's the other consideration there. Um, just like I don't really list on eBay anymore. Everything is listed on Cellbrite, and um, so I, it's 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 not the same way as as most people. Cellbrite's the third party app. You list your listing and create it in Cellbrite. And I only create the listing once, and I don't have to cut and paste anything. Everything goes into Cellbrite as like I'm on eBay, but instead of just being on eBay, I can click a few buttons and send it to all the sites that Cellbrite handles. And from what I heard, they're going to be advancing and adding more sites into their, their mix. And I have somebody working on an API, so if all that works, I'll just be able to do everything from Cellbrite now. And, um, you know, I won't have to worry about any individual stuff like that. You can do FBA straight from Cellbrite as well, just as easily, um, you know. So and I'm, I'm going to cover Cellbrite. I, I can do that as well, too. So maybe I can work it into that aspect of it. Let's get down to some more questions here. Um, greetings from Detroit. Digica now I'm going to pronounce it bat, uh, poorly. Digi Digica. Tuss. No, I'm not even going to try it. I'm sorry. I think I pronounced it correct once in my life, but I'm I'm not going to butcher your your uh, name that badly. Are you a collector? Ninety one. Let's see. Uh, give some thumbs up if you haven't. I got a hundred and almost 150 people. It looks like on right now, and 53 likes. If you enjoy it, please hit the like button. Um, and again, I did do a call out for those who are just popping on here. If you are using the new payment system, eBay's payment system and you have increased sales because of that, please leave a, a comment down in the comment section. Not in the chat, but in the comment section. I'm trying to get a consensus. I'm going to take a survey on all the platforms I'm on and see if eBay's stated uh, thing uh, that you'll get an increase in sales from using the new payment is actually a fact. I want to see, see the consensus from as many people as I can so we can see if they're being honest with us. That's my opinion on that. So. Silver Sobo, Sobi. I'm sorry. What's the first thing you sold on eBay? That's it was a uh, 20 minute 1977 Star Wars 8 millimeter sound film. That's what I. That was my very first thing I sold on eBay. It was 40 some odd bucks I got out of it, 20 plus years ago. That was my very first thing, and we sold it by a lark. I found eBay by accident. Um, I just bought it because I was a big Star Wars fan. Never had an intent to sell it, but. That's how we got started 20 plus years ago. When eBay was first called eBay, the very first year was when we sold our first things. I was on Yahoo Auctions back in the day, too. But Anidza Liems, 
I'm sure I butcher that. I do apologize. Hello from Canada. Old Disney VHS still still on eBay. Any suggestions? Um, there are no Black Diamond thousand dollar VHS tapes. That's just uh, uh, those are just money laundering or something like that. There are some that do still sell for a few bucks extra, like the Little Mermaid with the um, X-rated um, cover. That one still sells. I get like fifteen, twenty bucks, thirty bucks. There's some like uh, scarce ones from like Park Systems and things like that. They're like um, commercials almost to some extent. There's some that still go for hundreds of dollars, but the majority of like the Disney classics, Black Diamonds, all that stuff's just a money laundering scheme as far as I could say. I've never seen any that honestly sell for those prices. So again, there are some that are worth a few hundred bucks, but they're not any of the Black Diamonds. They're limited. There's some from like Walt Disney World, um, like the produced from the first year they opened in the 80s. Some of those go well. Some of the like uh, compilation um, VHS tapes that have like uh, 40 minutes of Goofy and things like that from when they first came out in the clamshell. Some of those are worth some decent money. How you doing, Carl? Can you touch on your experience with Amazon FBA for books and if it is worth putting energy into 2019 for books? I did books on Amazon years back when we first started full time. And it was worth it back then because I could send in like four to say five dollar books profit wise. I'd take home four to five bucks. And sometimes it wasn't quite that many. But um, I could sell them, you know, tons of them a day. So they turned over real quick and the storage fees were, you know, very, very uh, small. Since they've raised the storage fees, we stopped doing it then because it got to be where my bread and butter wasn't making us the bread and butter because the fees were eating it up and it wasn't worth our time to make 98 cents or 56 cents or a dollar or two on any item because the the storage fees. So I personally do not scan books like, like that anymore. I'm not mass, mass go to a book place and just scan books for hours. I don't go to savers or anything like that. I used to do that. I don't do it anymore because of the storage. Competition, it's still some competition, and you know it does affect the business. But again, the storage fees are the main reason because the majority of books you find aren't the high price ones. And once my bread and butter was dead on FBA for books, I moved on from there. I saw a couple of YouTubers the other day that were doing, and I, I don't remember the name on it. I wished I could remember because it was just something passing. Somebody actually sent me a link about some other YouTuber that's quitting Amazon who was doing books now. I don't remember the name, but the point is that somebody doing books now who's been a YouTuber for a while quit doing books because of issues. You know, everything takes time. You know, you got to take the time into it. Books could still be a real good thing. I'm not saying they're not, but for me, the, the sourcing aspect, I was spending way too much time and the storage ate up, the storage fees ate up a lot of it. So I moved on to easier things and books weigh a lot. Um, I'd rather FBA uh, box of toys um, than books any day of the week. I'd rather get RA items or wholesale items and just get a pallet or get a big, huge assortment show up here, throw it in a Home Depot box, label it, and send it off. I mean, we still do that, you know, when I when I run across. RA items here are slim this time of year for us. So I'm not doing much at all in FBA for RA. Um, that's just like extra money for us, RA. We have three items on, on um, wholesale-wise on Amazon, though, that we've had for like... We're going on our fourth year that we're the only people that are still right this minute selling those items. So again, I, I can't give up the information on that, but I moved away from books because of all those issues. It just, it just wasn't worth the time, the hassle, and the aggravation. Just FYI, my personal opinion. If you've got awesome sources, books could still be a viable, you know, but you got to get higher dollar books because the bread and butter of most people back in the day was the three to say $5 books. You could just sell so many of those. You know, you sell 70 of them a day in, in some cases, and they'd sell quick back then, too. Brandon, well, welcome. I'm in Ohio as well also, so depends on whereabouts you are in Ohio. Fat Man the Flipper. I think we have around 600 videos up on here right now. Um, video for tomorrow is done. Um, I don't know which one's going up tomorrow. I've got one on some costume jewelry, and I've got um, the um, storage video, I think, about done, too. Um, so I don't know which one I'll put up tomorrow, but one of those will be up tomorrow. And again, this weekend, 
My um, other channel will be up. The Art Professor will be live this weekend, 100%. Credits are done. Animation's done for the, the little animation I did for the credits. Um, first video, first two videos are actually shot. My introduction I'll have done first thing in the morning. So um, Patreon, folks, you'll get to see it ahead of time before anybody else sees it by a day or two. I'll just post you a link from my other channel um, into Patreon, probably tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. You'll see it definitely before everybody else does. Uh, Wubba Lubba, having wonderful sales, way up. Yesterday was a very good day. Yeah, overall, the whole month, we're way up. And I'm literally like in the 28% over last, year over last. Yeah, Walgreens, Brandon's Walgreens does do well. Another thing that you can do for RA items um, from Walgreens and Eckerd's, They've got, um, I can't remember the brand of the tea, but there's an oolong tea that they sell. And uh, it's really, it's turt cheap, literally. And we were getting like uh, four or five times what we paid for it on Amazon. And I just stopped getting it around here just because uh, the store that they had over here um, was remodeling. And it just wasn't practical over there. But if you go around to enough of them, you can get a ton of their coffee. They're like, um, it's, I think, a mix of like three different varieties that we were getting last time. But the oolong that we get, and the wife was here, she'd tell me instantly the name of it. That's one of her things. But um, you can do very well at Walgreens. You can do Eckerd's. Even Kroger's has a toy section nowadays. And in, when they go on clearance, I usually pay attention. Um, I think I showed an in, uh, Instagram post some of the uh, discounts at, Wa at uh, Kroger's that we scored out on, too. And I've talked about some of the money we make from there, too. Vera Wang, Truly Pink, that the uh, perfume, too. Yeah, you can get that at Walmart occasionally, too, when they do clearance. Dan Sweeps. If you go to um, the uh, video I had just the other day on buttons, shirt buttons, I've got links down below for a bunch of price guides right below that there. Um, the best one for identification is the big book of buttons. That's a couple hundred bucks, but it doesn't have prices. You'd still need to go buy a price list, and then that price list isn't going to do you a whole lot of good. Prices on buttons go by um, some of the leading auction houses. There's, there's one that only does buttons, um, and then you would also have to go buy eBay prices for most of those. Buttons are a different thing. I'm, I used to belong to a button club in Florida, and they have button shows, and that's always a good source too, but that's who sets the prices, and that's the type of people who would actually be buying them other than the military. The military are military collectors who buy those. Um, but I do have the links for the ID books, and there are a few price guides that I didn't include in there, Dan. Just go back. It's like two or three days ago. It says um, shirt buttons, I think, worth 5000 plus, which is a true thing. There are shirt buttons that sell for that price range. Let's pop on down here. Minnesota, excited for uh, Treasure by Grace. Uh, excited for quarter four. Quarter three has been good for me, selling mainly used goods, not clothing. It depends on what you sell. Again, clothing right now is having a, a struggle time. There are some people who do do clothing and do do well. Most people, though, that are that are just crushing it like us have branched out drastically. We're not just into one area, two areas, three areas. We sell in probably 100 different categories or niches, I should say. Um, and then we have the standards that we always sell. You know, Amazon is a good plus for many things like some of the video games. Um, it depends on the video game. Sometimes people just throw them up on Amazon. And then if, if you would have looked on eBay, you'll find out that some games sell better on um, eBay than they do on Amazon. And I, I can sell video games all day long in the collectibles category, just FYI, um, you know. And that's where I sell a lot of them. If it's a vintage game, I can officially, without a problem with the, with uh, Amazon, sell them there. Um one game like uh, like the Neverhood. If you don't know what that is, not the Neverhood. Is that what it is? Yeah, I think it is the Neverhood. Um, it's a PC game, but um, that one it sells for twice what the Amazon prices are on eBay. I don't know what the deal is, but there's certain games like that too. Um, as I said, I've got a haul here on video games that I'm going to uh, have a video put together. Um, probably maybe Sunday I'll have that one up. But I'll go in a little bit into the pricing on them and what sites best to look at on those because, you know, some people just go straight to Amazon and Amazon isn't always the, the best choice for everything. Just because more collectible items sell on eBay than on Amazon and video games do fall into the collectibles category. Um, and that, again, that's why I can sell so many items on Amazon because we are in gated and, and collectibles. I still haven't heard of anybody yet um, getting on gated and collectibles um, 
so as soon as I do find out, I will holler that out to some folks here. Um, I got some people getting close and have getting responses, but no one yet I've seen has been ungated. Maybe they locked down the category. I don't know. Um, but you did see that I'm ungated those in Patreon because I did show you my my um, category pages on Amazon. Uh, let's see. Charles was my sales are way, way down. Worst two months I've had in years. Listing every day have 1,050 items up. Hardly any sales. Depends on what you have. I don't know specifics on your store, Charles, but all I can tell you is it depends on what you have. Um, now I know some people say, I'll shoot this out as a philosophy. Or some people say that they only want to sell the high dollar stuff and they're not going to mess with $5 and $10 items. I don't try to sell anything under $9.99, but in all honesty, if you're new and you're having these days, $5 items sell way quicker on in areas where stuff isn't moving than 40 and $50 items, just, just to give that out to you there. Um, again, it depends on what you're selling and, and, and if you've got good items. If my items don't sell or something's not, not going, I'm going to look at my items very closely and look at my store and see how my store is going with that. I'll look at my titles. I'll maybe even go to Chrome and, and do a fresh, you know, cleared out browser search and see if my items show up anywhere on a Google search. I'll see what my competitors are selling if they're selling similar items. You're going to have to dig in on time-wise to see what's going on. Thousand items may not be enough for what you're selling. It's hard to say. You know, some people can make a fortune and only have 10 items up. There's people that can have, you know, four items up and make more than I do. And only sell four specific items all the time. So, it, it, again, it depends on your model. Our model is has many items up. I have the antique mall model, where you just put the stuff in there and let it ride. I've done the homework, though, on the items. I've tried to weed out anything that I don't think will sell. We do go through and look at items that have been up for three or four years routinely nowadays. Um, and we'll either gang them up in a, a um, lot if they're not selling. One listing will stay and we'll download uh, the photos and then re-up them to the one listing and then just change one listing and then end the other listings. Or we'll just delete the item totally or I'll try it in a platform that if, if I hadn't had it. As I said, we're staggering out cross-listing items. So if something hasn't sold and I'm literally we're starting out the oldest items first, I'm popping them up on other sites, other platforms to see what's going on. That's another thought. If you're not selling stuff and you're only on eBay, you're, you're not branching out enough. In in most aspects, if you spend the 40 bucks on Amazon to, to get the business account, that's your in right there. It might take you time to get on gated in other areas, but there's a ton of stuff to sell on Amazon. You know, it just depends on what you're finding and what, what your, your, your thoughts are on it. Etsy can be good too. So if you're selling vintage and stuff, Etsy is a possibility. People put stuff up on Pinterest as well for sale, on Instagram, Facebook Marketplace. I mean, all those other, other spots are, are sellable. If you do records, there's Discogs. There's, there's several other sites too. But I mean, there's a specialty site for almost everything. Hit postcards if you're not selling enough postcards. Double list them on another platform. McCrary is not huge. Bandanz is not huge. I mean, I wouldn't pay for listing stuff like that, but on the sites that are free and stuff like that, you're not losing anything, especially if it's got a, if there's apps that'll do the uh, cross-listing and uploading your listings to the other platforms. I mean, those are all things to think about. Look at the items, look at your titles. I mean, sometimes people say, hey, this hasn't sold in a while, and they'll send me a um, uh, uh, a link to that item and I'll go look at it and, and something s as simple as a miss keyword in the title will be enough to sell it within a, a couple days. And that's happened many, many, many times. And I'm not exaggerating. There are several people in the chat right now that I'm sure could back me up on that. They've asked me about things. I added some details to, and told them to put this in there and then they've sold. It's not like I'm some genius and I can fix everything. It was just something that was obvious to me but may not be obvious to you. People point out things to me that, hey, I never thought about that. You know, Don pointed out some things on, on Instagram for me, and I hadn't a clue, you know. So, you know, you can learn something from anybody, you know. That's just that's just the way it is. Here's Carl on his vacation. And, and, and same thing, Carl's through the roof. Again, it depends on what you're selling how you're handling your business as well, too. I mean, it's just a great experience. Carl went to Jamaica, if I remember right, or was it um, 
The Bahamas, maybe. That's what it was. I'm sorry. The Bahamas. Uh, let's see. Hey, Dom. There's Dom. Primetime Treasure Hunter right there. We, we talked about you a little while ago. A couple of times. In fact, I just talked about you, and there you are right there. Uh, let's see here. Did I miss something? Hang on just a second here. It looks like maybe my feed bounced. Yeah, it's hard to tell. My feed, my feed's all over the place. Let's move forward here. Carolina picks. My sales are up 13% from last year. Hoping to have a big fourth quarter. Already been listing uh, fourth quarter stuff. Yes, that is the exact thing that you need to be doing. Spent the day listing Carl. Spent the day listing vintage Christmas stuff. Good time as well. Now for items that are Christmas oriented that should sell higher in Christmas. What I do is I list them now at the higher price right off the bat. I don't, you know, I list them knowing that I can get thirty percent more on some items now, and I'll just let them run till Christmas. Sometimes they sell at that price right away. Other times they might sit there through Christmas, and then come Christmas time, I'll probably be wiped out on my Victorian cards, my Christmas cards from the 20s. Most of my decent Santa Claus Christmas cards will be gone. My die cuts, my Christmas poster stamps will be gone. Probably most of my books, magazines related to Christmas will be gone. That's usually what happens. I usually get wiped out for that. I, I can't get enough Halloween stuff in right now to keep it in stock. I mean, that stuff's just been flying off the shelf. If I list a card, it's been gone like within a couple of days, in all honesty. So now's the time to get those holiday stuff up, even though we're far off from Christmas still. Uh, Tara, mine were bad from July 4th through first week of August, but have definitely picked up this last two weeks. Well, that's good to hear, Tara. <laughs> Uh, the Zine Store. Uh, Amazon was great last month. eBay, great this month. No rhyme or reason. Yeah, it depends on what you sell, I guess you could say. I could literally, you know, write down my numbers probably for next month and be pretty darn close, in all honesty, because it's it's pretty well... Um, we, we hit some level that it, it just... We just have the sales in daily. I mean, though we'll have a day that we might do... On just this store, I might hit like two grand in sales in just one day, but, you know, that's a good, good change. So I don't mind that, but... Drop wise, I don't. I'm not below my numbers. I'm almost. I, I can't tell you when I've been below my numbers. Maybe one day, like three or four months ago, maybe. But these days, it's three, five, ten, fifteen, twenty percent up from uh, from what I should be. So, I can't complain at all. Uh, what is it? Five thousand slow eBay sales here this month, but good locally. Cover up the difference. That's a that's a good thing to do. He's got his local business, so he can do it too. A thousand items is a is a chore to do um, by yourself. I would say, um, it depends again what you're listing. I can list thirty paper items in an hour, no exaggeration, because it's two photos, it's three with a zoom in, and that's it. I mean, it's it's super quick. A paper item at thirty uh, thirty an hour. That's about average for most of the people here that work for us. A couple do in the twenty four twenty five an hour. Um, listings, and we're talking postcards or cards of, of this type, and they they scan in like two seconds in our duplex scanner, which I've shown too. Uh, so yeah, a thousand is a good good mark. Scott, how are you doing, Scott? As for my sales, Dad stays home with our five and eight year olds. Sales are poo. Can't wait for school next week. Well, you got that to look forward to. Um, I'm always cautious with taking the kids to school these days with all the the stuff going on, but. School is a good thing. Uh, Fat Man the Flipper, I started listing more consistently. Amazing enough, my sales are reflecting it. I'm telling you, if I list 100 items a day, um, I'm going to sell 3 to 5% of those. No matter what. Every single day I do that. Every single day. Day in, day out. If you're in Patreon, I, sh I talked about those records. I sold another one out of that lot. It's it's the way it works. You're going to get a certain percentage of that will sell as soon as you list them. Sometimes within an hour. If if my guys are listing a bunch of stuff before their shift is done, they've sold enough to pay for the items and their shift and make me a profit probably about 90% of the time. 
90% of the time. That's no exaggeration. But, you know, some days we might list two or 300 items in that same day because three, four, maybe even five people are all listing at the same time. So hundreds of items can go up all at, a sa at the same time. We sell maybe a hundred, couple hundred items in the same time length. So you got to keep increasing it. So the more you sell, the more you got to list, obviously. You got to feed the machine. And as, as Fat Man the Flipper says, if you do listings every day, the, the eBay gods will, will you know, uh, shine grace on you and you're going to sell more items. That's the number one thing anybody can do to sell more items is to list more items. That's, that's a fact. Design store more. I like bundles so I can make more money or make my money back and have long tail items. I buy. I try to buy everything in bundles. Even selling stuff in bundles can work for you too. In some cases, I can get more money selling some items in bundles than I could if I sold them individually. Just because no one wants to spend shipping and all this stuff, buying this item, this item, this item, you can just get a whole big lump sum like a whole set. Like a whole run of comic books or a whole run of a book series or something. Selling them all in many time, many cases, selling a whole collection, the entire complete collection, can get you more money than breaking those apart. Because then those people who are buying the collection don't have to sit here and spend time and effort to buy a couple items here, a couple items there. One lump sum, they got them, they own the entire collection, and they're done. I mean, that that's why they sell for more in those cases. And Karen, same thing here. Karen, my sales have definitely been up with a correlation to increasing my weekly listings. The more you list, the more you sell. I'll say it one more time. If I list 100 items, I'm selling 3 to 5% of those items. Any items, whatever I list, whatever the quantity, 3, three to 5% sell immediately. Sometimes it's 20 and 30% of what I just listed sells immediately. High dollar items or not. And many times when it sells immediately, I'm not even having to take an offer. It's just immediately somebody buys it full price without even making an offer on it. Uh, that happens more often than not. Uh, Michelle Trout, how are you doing as well? Carl, does that hold true with the 1700s? If you're talking about age on something, age means nothing. You can find stuff from the 15 and 1600s that hold very little value. Like a flintlock from the 15, 1600s. Most of those are wall hangers. They're beat up and dead. and I mean, a couple hundred bucks for some items. And that's not a fortune to me, you know? It just depends on what you're selling. Age means nothing, though. It does not matter. Like a Byzantine coin, there's... Tens of thousands of those. Roman coins. If you know how many Roman coins are dug up every single year, unless it's like some gold one or a silver one or a denarii or something something really scarce, most of them are just common. An average Roman coin, which you would think, oh, that's you know 2,000 years old, would be worth a fortune. But, you know, a couple bucks a piece for the average one. Flip it for real. Good evening as well. Been to Detroit many times. I just bought a postcard early 1900s linen. Well, linen's going to be like um, late 40s Baton Rouge that is double printed, much like some of the coins you showed us. Does that make postcards worth more? I would probably guess it's not going to make it worth more, and it might hurt the value on it as a misprint. People collect postcards for the historical content. They worked there, their uncle owned it, their grandfather owned the building. They grew up walking by that location. They're from that town. They're the historical society in the town or they're buying it for a school. Most people don't buy the, care about the, the errors. Records, the same thing. I thought I scored really good on a record um, because, and I don't run into records that are printed upside down. Part of the label is upside down. It didn't match the label. So I thought it was gonna be worth a lot more money it turns out records, if it's misprinted, unless it's the Beatles or something, aren't going to be worth any extra. In fact, it hurts the value of, of like a record if it's misprinted in a certain way. So it, it just depends on the item. Coins are a totally different story. Stamps are a totally different story, as are the, uh, the money themselves, like bills and stuff. If it was printed by the government and it's an error... Chances are it's worth something. But if it's just an error from like a Joe Schmo who printed postcards, I wouldn't hold value in that. A, a, a comic book may hold value if it's like a double cover or they forgot to print a color on it. Now, that would hold value um, to an extent, too. So just take that into consideration. Uh, upstate picker. All valuable things are rare but are not... All rare things are valuable. That's that's fairly true, yes. 
Even if something's rare, it doesn't mean it's worth anything either, though. Just keep that in mind. If no one wants it, it's going to hold no value, regardless of how rare it is. Even if it's a one of a kind, it doesn't mean it's going to be worth money either. Stony Creek Pickers, good evening, good evening. Ernest Hemingway's aunt, huh? We used to go down to Key West a lot and see some of the locations down there. Yeah, Dom's talking about comic books. Um, Dom, same with comic books. Old does not necessarily mean valuable. 1930s and 40s comic books with 10 cents on the cover mainly be worth a dollar or two, in all honesty, especially if they're comic book characters or just not highly collectible. Superhero, different story, but there's a ton of old comic books that are 10 cent covers that just aren't worth anything. I look at what I dig into for um, uh, dime comics and, you know, 40s and stuff are sci fi, horror classics, pre code, of course. And Superhero. Those are like the best ones to get. Now, some of the Disney and some of the cartoon ones do hold some value. It depends on the label and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it, it just depends. Miss Me, how are you doing this evening? I'm up 27%. I did all that worrying for nothing. I took your advice about estate sales. I was at one house for three hours, but I looked at but I looked at things I would have passed by. Well, hopefully that did score you out there. Again, I don't, I don't worry if I got to stop and look stuff up. Um, if if there's a potential in it, if you don't know the item, look it up. You know, I'm glad for you, Miss Mimi, 100%, because I, I did read your comment on it from the last time with having some issues there. So I'm glad it's turning around for you. This week could be slow for a lot of people, and next week could as well, just because school starts up. So a lot of people have stuff going on. This week has been kid stuff for us, you know, from the morning till night. Um, in fact, today is the same thing. It's going to be another busy evening trying to get some other stuff up and stuff going. So, I mean, you're going to be a little slower possibly depending on what you sell right now. Just, again, because anybody with kids is probably worrying about getting their kids back in school. I know Dom, for example, has the same basic uh, concerns. He's got his kids back in school. And Chris, uh, Thrift Shop Hustler as well, kids back in school. Um, you know, so... That's where everybody's at. So your sales could be sold. Now, mine, on the other hand, haven't been. But again, I sell different things. Probably a lot of the, what I sell are are to people who kids are growing up. You know, just what I take on it. Oh, let's see where we're at. Yeah, we're getting down in time. For sure, big correlation to listings and sales. Once I hit a 1,000 listings, though, I am going to test it and take a small listing vacation. Amazon Seller 99. I'll be the last seller of the switches over. Let everyone else be the guinea pigs. Yeah, I'm waiting until the end. The, I did switch over in one of our stores, and I haven't had any issues. <clears throat> I didn't see any increase, though. Yeah, eBay stated openly that when you list daily, they will, you know, it's going to uh, give you a, beggar, uh, a bigger return on your investment, I guess I should say. Hey, Aaron, how you doing, Aaron? Welcome, welcome. New video up in Patreon as soon as the show's over too, Aaron. For you too, Miss Mimi. Two ta ta cars. Two ta cars. Know anything about matchbook cases? You're talking about um, match safes? Yes, I sell those too if that's what you're talking about. Or if you're talking about like uh, the small wooden boxes that you slot or the, the cases for the boxes too, we do those too. Match safes are usually what they're called. Um, wouldn't be technically a case. It would be a match safe, I would say. I just sold a lot of matchbooks, about 1000 in a large box or 40 bucks. On those matchbooks, Mike, another one of my subs here, sells like 8 or 10 from the same city for like 20 bucks all day long. So on matchbooks like that, as long as they're complete, you don't have to have the matches. As long as the actual matchbook cardboard piece is all there... You can still get decent money for them selling them in a lot. He just throws them on a scanner and lists a scanner full of matchbooks, 20 bucks a pop. All from the same town or all soda related. So if you get those big lots, you can probably get a, a larger amount of money by doing that and breaking them up into smaller lots. I would never or wouldn't want to sell a thousand all at once unless I've already done every other aspect trying to sell them. Again, just because historical wise, they will sell like matchbooks from the 30s from my hometown the town where we're at generally here 
will almost always sell. And I, I'm, again, I looked it up after after Mike told me this, and sure enough, we've had good luck doing the same thing. You know, they're not super quick movers, but you know, every 30 days we sell well enough to cover all the listings and still get a good profit coming back for them. Uh, the profits, the, the the important thing, the bottom line. Who cares what you're spending as long as your bottom line, your margin, your profit margin is good. And we're running like 80% right now, so I can't complain at all, in all honesty. Miss Mimi. Uh, Miss Mimi's up to 500 listings. I just sold... Okay, we got that one. I'm sorry. Oh, via Bonanza, of all things. I don't do Bonanza. I looked into it. It just wasn't big enough, I think, for my personal draw. Yeah, when you switch a bin to a, an auction, it switches the entire... I'm, in fact, it might even switch the listing framework on the servers, and that's why it probably loses everything to it, because it ends the listing, and it gives you a whole new number and a whole new setup when you do that. So whatever you do like that, it totally kills any of the links to it. That's one reason I say when people do these, let's edit it and, you know, it's going to fix my listings. You're killing all that stuff. You're you're getting rid of it if you, you change stuff in, in, in that aspect of it. If you're not changing anything on your listing, you're not doing anything other than possibly dragging your, your watchers away. That's about all you're really doing. Hey, Rob. Yeah, I gotta take my son. We don't. They don't do parallel parking here at all. They do um, like a maneuverability test. I remember the parallel parking. I gotta take my youngest out this weekend too. Good luck with that. Hope it goes well for your son there. Etsy is forcing free shipping if item is thirty five. Yeah, I saw that too. You don't have to do it. You just won't won't get um, as much of a viewership. You won't get. Um, Good placement, I guess. But you don't have to do the free shipping. Dave Rubino, I hate white back, oh, white backgrounds for Google. Depends on the item, I guess. I try to do white backgrounds for everything because Amazon, it's required. So anything you're going to list on, on Amazon, if you try to list it from your phone now, I tried to list um, a college book at Amazon from the phone, and I couldn't get quite a white enough background at the school. And uh, it gave me a warning, wouldn't allow me to list it. So Amazon is very strict from the phone. I'm usually only listing it at, at home, but uh, college is in now, and those college books need to go up immediately. So that's literally, as soon as I got home, I listed them just because they'll, they'll sell right away. School's in session, so I only got about a two-week or three-week at the most time frame to sell these. And after this year, they won't hold much value at all. So on some things you you want to list it, but if without a white background, you, you can be in some trouble on Amazon. So that's why I wouldn't mess with it. Let me just shout out you another bolo here. Um, in fact, let me take it out of here so you can see this. Now, I anything's game in my book, and I've said that before. Anything is game. Um, let's see if it's going to show up here because I didn't think about it. Yeah, it's a green boat. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Hang on just a second here. I can show you part of this. The gist on what I'm going to show you, these are cake decorations. It's a man in a boat, and unfortunately I can't show you the boat, but it's a man in a boat, and um, I think he's turkey hunting. Yeah, he's turkey hunting, and there's fish that come with it. Now, these figures, believe it or not, sell very, very well um, for cake decorations and things. I always sell these. This is like circa 1960. This thing is solid, heavy, well-designed. It's not a cheapo one. I get all. I sell all these cake decoration things, the trees, the whole setup from a, a setup, and this is like a whole scene you would put on the cake, fishing pole. Um, it's got everything with it. I mean, the whole works. Something you should look for. I got sixty nine cents into the whole bag of this. I should get about fifteen or twenty bucks out of this bag here. Now I know it doesn't look like much, and that's not a huge fortune, but sixty nine cents, uh, uh, two cents to a nickel to list probably be up for two months so you know six cents or so when the listing at total and then my fees and i'm going to walk home with take home about 14 bucks out of that they always sell just like uh vintage cake pans the the wilton cake pans and that's not wilton but any of the wilton figures i usually buy i even sell the really nice bride and grooms that go on the top of cakes if they're new in the box i always sell those and they always go very well those are an amazon only product for me those go straight to amazon if they're opened and, and used 
uh, bride and groom figures that go up on eBay, if they're vintage and they have like beads on them, real beads or or um, uh, fabric on them, those go up on eBay really quickly because those, those almost always sell immediately. Something old, and that's their something old. So I've done very well with cake decorating items across the board. Um, it, the figures do very well. Mark's made some that you'll find on cakes, and you also find Mark's figures mixed up in cake decorations. Um, people put the little army men on a cake. I've seen it. Or the tanks and all that kind of stuff. So cake decorating items, the figures, the, the decorations for the top, the cakes themselves, the pan, the aluminum pans, especially like uh, the Superman or Batman one that have the plastic uh, Superman emblem or the bat emblem that would go on his chest for the cake. They're plastic. It's a separate piece. I always get 15 or 20 bucks for those. I usually pay a dollar or less for every one I get. I have no pans in house and I buy them all the time, but they always sell. You got to have the right price. You got to have the right platform. Etsy, they'll sell on as well. And eBay or uh, eBay, Etsy and Amazon. Those are where I would sell cake pans and cake decorations. Um, sometimes you can list like the, the dude I just showed you. You can list in the toy section as well. And people will um, customize those figures and put them in like a mark set. They'll chop off the head and shoulders and it'll be it turned into a driver. This is things people do. So people miss that, that, that they can customize cake decorating figures. They're, they're normal figures. I've seen people put them in tractors. I've seen people put them in trucks or cars. I've seen somebody turn one of these figures into a Dick Tracy character, and it really looked like the dude, and he replaced one that he couldn't find. So, I mean, there's so many other reasons to buy that, but cake decorating figures always sell for us. You know, most people don't talk about it, but there is a, a decent amount of money because usually when you walk up on like a garage sale of a craft or something, if it's a cake maker or someone who loves making cakes and bacon, there could be dozens and dozens of, you know, cake pans and dozens and dozens of these figures and cake decorating pieces for almost nothing. You can buy them in big bulk. And I don't know how many times I, I walk up on that. Just like crafter and scrapbookers who have a garage sale and get rid of thousands of items all at a garage sale. And sometimes you can buy out just big bulk lots of this stuff piece it out on eBay, especially the new sealed items, or you lot them together. I have no problem bundling and lotting anything if that's the best way to sell it. Kids deals no more. With clothing, Poshmark is usually the first to show on Google. Depends on what... Um, Amazon's almost always the first one for us if we're looking for a specific... My wife buys clothing offline quite often, or I'll buy t-shirts or something on there, comical shirts gifts and stuff. Almost always the ones that we look for anyway show up on Amazon. I'm not saying it's the case for what you're selling. It just depends, I guess, on what you're selling. We did quit clothing. I did Poshmark for a little while. It just wasn't my thing. But again, nothing wrong with Poshmark. I know many people who enjoy it and have a good time on it and do make some money on it. So, uh, Does it help with sales to promote your listings? Now, it depends on what you're selling. If you're selling a video game that there's 50 more of them up online on, on, on your same platform, you're going to have to do something to differentiate yourself from everybody else. If you're selling um, a postcard or something and you've got like the only one of that postcard, I'm not going to promote it at all because, you know, it's not going to do any good. I'm just going to be offering it to the one or two people that will be interested in it at a cheaper price. Vintage buttons. Like if I have the buttons or something... I'm going to, you know, not mark them down because how many people are going to find them? I mean, you want to talk about military buttons? I mean, this whole bag's full of 1920 or before buttons. Some of these go back to Indian War. There's eagles in there. This one's Indian War right, right there. Um, these are just examples of stuff. I've never marked this stuff down. If I didn't sell it right away, I probably didn't price it right away. I didn't price it right. I mean... It depends on the item, I guess you could say. It just depends on the item, on what I'll do with it. I'll never mark down um, some of the collectibles. Other ones, I've, I've triple priced them or priced them really high, and they've been up for a long time. I might promote them by 1% or 2% if it's something like a, a Santa Claus card that's been up for a little while. Because I know it's going to sell. I just Maybe I don't have the right price point. Uh, again, it just depends on you knowing your prices as well. Know your items. Know the items that you sell and know a, a, a range that you want to get them in and what they should sell for. Like in Patreon, I'm, I've been talking about records and stuff. I know mine. I don't have to look them up when I go out for the most part, most anyone. And I'm dead on with, with you know 
profit wise. I may not hit every single record, but I always make a good massive profit off of stuff like that. So, you know, it, it just depends on what you're doing and what items you're selling, I guess. I do do promote it on some items though. I have to excuse me. My dogs are here and I think I'm slightly allergic to my own dogs. How many people here built their own shelving versus buying pre-made metal or plastic shelves? I'll tell you what, time-wise and money-wise, the shelves I use, for 110 bucks. I got, um, I would gather, it's like 10, I think they're 5 feet across. They're, they, they go all the way to the ceiling. 110 bucks for two of these shelves from Walmart. And it was drop shipped at my house, included in that fee. And each shelf holds, I want to say it quotes like 1,400 pounds or something. It's some. It, I think the whole shelf together maybe holds 8,000 pounds. If you got the time, that's great. But for me, I just bought them. I, I know they're going to hold the weight. I can move them around. They've got small clips and you know I can put more board in them and all that stuff. Again, whatever works for you. Um, but sometimes it's just not worth your time or effort to build your own. And not criticizing anybody who does that because there's plenty of stuff I built myself like my own lighting. Shelving, I didn't have the patience for because I've got, I've got a lot of shelving. I, I've got a lot, a lot of shelving, you know, hundreds of feet of shelving all together. In all honesty, it's a lot of shelving, so I would never want to have to build that much. And this was, it took ten minutes to put up, you know, each each shelving, and they were all ready to go the minute I put them up. So, time in it again. It, build stuff if you can, if the time's great. I'm not. I can do carpentry. I took a class in, at, in Meridian, Mississippi, actually. But, you know, I, I don't want to spend the time doing that. Um, more power to you, though, Carl. I fully get it. I built canopy outside and all that stuff. That was cheaper to buy or to make than it was to buy. It just depends on what it is. For 55 bucks a shelf, I just I just bought it. Had them up, I had them now for three, four, how many years? We've had them now for five years. The ones in the garage came from restaurants too. They're Metro Max and I got them from restaurants I used to work at too. The ones in this area here you see are $55 per shelving whole unit from Walmart um, shipped. Don't procrastinate. Just if, if you haven't done the shelves, just buy them. 55 bucks a piece, I'm telling you. Walmart. Um, I don't remember the name, but they're 55 bucks a piece. Sales question you asked, since listing every day to try to get to 400 listing sales have taken off. We list 10, sell three or four. We are finding it hard to get to 400, sell part-time. Yeah, Rich, that's another issue people do run into. You sell sometimes more than you can get up in the time frame. So as I said, if I'm listing 500 or 1,000 items a week, I may be selling six or 700 items in that, out of that, and they're gone. So then I'm stuck back to only getting a few hundred up each month. That's part of the issue. And once we go full-fledged across all platforms, it's going to be even more of an issue trying to get enough stuff up. I may have to look into hiring some more employees or something. I don't know yet. Dicketus. Uh, hopefully that was right. I only do promoted item if there are more than 100 items like mine. He's got a good example. He picked a number and he's going with that. That's a good thing to do. Whatever number works for you. Treasure by Grace. Yes, a lot of zero feedback. New buyers for me. No doubt search engine driven. Exactly. I'm telling you. If you're thinking you're going to edit your listings just to try and get a boost, all you're going to do is kill your Google search. And eBay was quoting some people were getting like 40 and 50% of their sales are coming off of the platform. That's huge. I'm telling you, eBay is really spending some money on promoting and getting the listings showing up on Google. Because again, most of the items you'd find on Amazon or any of the other sites, that's how you find them. Oh, I'm sorry, my screen, my feedback just disappeared way off. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, my feed's like totally off. Yeah, I bought shelving. I would only buy it. Bookkeeping software, I have an accountant. Wait, we have two. We've got one for payroll and then I've got one that does our accounting. Um, GoDaddy, I know people use. That's the only one I can tell you that I know people that use it. They like it. 
Old vintage paper collectibles and stamps have no... no they're exactly right, Duncan. No summer slowdown. So all year round, 100%. Pick up a uh, six million dollar man doll, 1975. If you pick up Roofwood Tr Thrift or a six million dollar man doll, make sure that the roll down skin is still good. Um, hopefully, he has his little um, chips, his eye works, and he has his clothing. Uh, if they're if he's naked for five bucks, I usually don't buy him at all, even at that price. A dollar I might, or even two dollars, but I I don't go up to five without clothing and without the skin on the arms. QuickBooks Online. Yeah, I couldn't, I wouldn't, I don't know who to re recommend on that. Hey, Annie, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome, Annie. Hope everything's going good for you, Annie. I got some, another video up as soon as I get off the show here, too. Dan Freeman, welcome. QB QuickBooks. Yeah, I don't know about that either. Do I th uh, thrifty 50-50 vet? Yes, I have a Facebook group, a Patreon group, and an, or a Patreon page, and an Instagram page. It's all the auction professor. If you look in the comment section, there's actually links to all of those as well. Patreon is a paid one, though. It's a pl paid platform. Carlene, how are you doing tonight? I've had a hard time finding it. Uh, finding any helpers. My kids do not want to help or their friends. Any ideas? I've even reached out to friends. Go to the college. Ask at the university. That would be my best guess. College kids do great on stuff like this. You know, they, they want, to, especially if they're in any kind of work program, because if you can get on like a work program or something else, advertise at the school. It's usually free, and you might be able to get some special considerations. You could even get some tax breaks for helping college students. FYI, that's that would be my number one source. When I worked for the restaurant industry as a regional and as a general manager, the colleges were the first place I advertised and posted signs for hiring. You know, do it professional, talk to them, interview the whole works. You know, make sure you're paying them straight. I don't do any 1098s or 1099 forms. Everybody works for me. I have an accountant. I pay payroll taxes, the whole works. So just FYI. I love GoDaddy for the amount of sales I have right now. It's great for me. GoDaddy, I've heard good stuff about. In fact, um, Cellbrite was bought out by GoDaddy. So I guess I should say I should promote it because uh, Cellbrite's pretty good. I don't know. Where are we at? eBay intra arbitrage seller here from Germany. I buy stuff from eBay and resell it on eBay. Well, thank you very kindly. Cryptotastic. Okay, Hans, my kidder tells me that your Instagram link is not working, but I found you anyway. I want to check out the books you purchased. I am a book person. Thank you for all the great information. Yeah, the books I got some. Uh, I got some uh, free books. It was at the university. They were giving them out. Um, the books themselves, if they weren't anointed. Uh, professor editions, I wouldn't have messed with them because they'd only go for you know 20 bucks or so. But the anointed editions, I've always sold uh, pretty good. I could probably sell them on Chegg real quick if I wanted to, but I don't mess with Cheggs too much anymore these days because there's usually better sources for them. I'll have to look at that Instagram too. I bought shelves, no time to make them. Use Don's Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, I do have a copies of that too, Carlene. Does he use that? Oh, well, good good for you, Miss Mimi. Top rated plus. That does help, believe it or not. I know people say it's not worth the discount. It's not just for the discount. It's for your reputation, your standing. It does help your views as well. It can help and increase your sales too. I strongly recommend Wave. It's online and free, and it links. I've been using it for several years for multiple businesses. I don't have anything linked to my bank accounts other than what I have to. Just my personal thing. I'm paranoid on having my identity stolen. It was stolen once when I was younger, and I couldn't get a, um, 
uh, scholarship and the loans and stuff for, for school because somebody used my information. Yeah, I use Excel. To, uh, you know that one too, Annie. You have mentioned several times about an app that lets you manage sold items that were cross-posted on different platforms without having to manually remove those items. It's Cellbrite. Cellbrite's the app that I use. Oh, Annie has already answered. Thank you, Annie. I know I'm behind. I'm bad on that. I didn't get to all the questions either. We're running, running behind as always. I'm trying to answer as many on online live. Um, again, giveaways coming up. So if you're not on my Instagram page, I'll have to fix that. I'll try to fix the link as soon as I get off here. After I post the the video link for Patreon, I will fix the link on Instagram. But again, if you're not on my Instagram page, the auction professor on Instagram, I am going to be giving something away. My other channel is live 100% this weekend. Finally, uh, it's taken some time to get to this point because um, I haven't been dedicating much time to it just because we're selling on eBay most of the time and Amazon and, and platforms. So that's where most of my money, most of my time goes. This is a side business, <clears throat> not really a business at this point, but I'm not a, like a YouTuber like everybody else. My My income comes from selling, not from YouTube videos like many people does, but anyway... Let's see here. I trust your advice because you live it full time. So thank you for sharing and teach. Well, thank you very kindly. Treasures by Grace. Well, thank you as well, Home Thrifters. And Karen, thank you as well. And Barbara, of course. How you doing, Barbara? Yeah, you guys are going to get something new in Patreon. I'm going to have you a guide that you can print off and take with you um, on the, the what we've been talking about. So watch the video that goes up tonight, and I'll explain what you're going to get. It's all included in there for all you guys on Patreon, the, uh, the $9.99 membership, because it goes along with the videos that we're showing. Well, thank you as well, Annie, of course. Annie's one of my very first ones. She is my first moderator ever. Very extremely knowledgeable all the way across the board. Yeah, you can post a copy of it if you want, Carl, in there. That's fine. I'll be on tomorrow morning on Patreon again. I've had a real long day. i got to get up with my youngest at like 5.30 every morning, Monday through Friday. So um, I go to bed earlier these days a little bit uh, just because my days run really long. I'm usually up like 14 hours moving these days, at least this last couple of weeks. I'm going to slow down once the kids are in school because my employees won't have to try and cram in all these hours. They won't be able to work during the day anymore. Um, two of them still will, but they're in school. But Thank you as well, Carl. I appreciate the nice words. And my feed just disappeared. Yeah, my feed's gone. Hang on, let's see if my feed comes back. Uh, hang on, my feed's dead. I don't have a feed. I can't see what anybody said. We're almost to the end. Oh, here we go, just a second. Let me see if I can get one more question in here. Uh, Cornelius, we watch the videos and go out and look for that item. It works out well, and I learn. Well, good to hear. Uh, I have flyers in the item or with the items I look for and hand them out all the time. Ninety percent of the stuff I buy comes from the responses to the flyers. Good. We again. I don't. I don't. I don't. I have pickers, so I don't have to do the the flyers. I've done them. I'm not saying I'm, I haven't done them. It's a mixed bag where it depends on where you're at. A lot of people just throw those away because if they've been in business a while, they've probably been hit up like fifty times. At least that's what I see. Um, in my experience, at least around here, because there's not many other sources, so everybody's trying to source the same way. Um, and my best bet was getting uh, getting pickers, because then I don't have to hunt down anything really anymore. I just get phone calls and go from there. Uh, Karen, I, I, uh, Karen Henderson, I found nineteen, <coughs> excuse me, twenties through forties slides of wealthy people, slides of beautiful cars, planes, funerals, cemeteries, diagrams of new models of cars. Where do I start the research? If they're slides, they probably aren't from the 20s. They may be cars and images of the 20s, but I doubt they would be slides back that far. 40s is about the, the time frame that you'll find on slides, I would say. 
Um, I just start looking up the one, the ones with cars and planes. I would look up first, or locations. I would literally look those up first, one by one, treat it as any type of collectible. Um, <coughs> excuse me, dog won't go away. Of course, we love our dog, so you know one of them's sick too. It's got an upper respiratory infection. All my prices for slides come off eBay. Every single one of them. It's the only place I price my slides is eBay. And um, you, you got to price by comparable. So if you got a fire truck from like the 40s or 50s on a slide, look up other fire trucks and price it accordingly. If you can't find any other ones that look like yours, look for the town. If it has a location that was taken in, look for slides from that town. That's another aspect of it. But everything for those slides you should be able to find on eBay uh, itself because that's one of the biggest markets for slides and stuff. Um, the other thing is I've got a video on YouTube as well on, um, you know, helping to be able to get a good picture of that. I use a light table. You can make one if you want to uh, make your own light table as well. Um, but that's what I use a light table on. Um, we've got a Nikon D5300, which we use to photograph it. And it does wonderful pictures. The, the lenses on it are just awesome. So you can zoom in and crop out everything, and it looks like you're just almost projecting it on the wall. I do have a slide projector too, but in all honesty, I'm lazy sometimes, and I don't feel like digging it out um, and projecting it on the screen. It's just easier sometimes with the light table. Movie film's a different story. We watch all the movies, but hopefully that helps you out there, Karen. You're welcome to post a few images if you want, and I can take a look at them as well on Patreon or something. I collect fishing tackle. I have seen guys wear shirts stating they collect tackle. I always ask, do you have any tackle? Old tackle is great, Bolo. I have made great. Yeah, we do great. There's um, there's a couple fishing lures that routinely sell in the $1,000 range, just like the wooden bobbers. Everybody passes by the bobbers, but any of the wooden bobbers, the corks, the old timers call them, I usually snag up for just pennies. They don't sell huge. They're not like super huge sellers, but the big ones are. The little wooden ones, I usually get on average five or six bucks a pop in a lot. So you pay a couple bucks for a whole bunch of them. You know, you turn around, you lot them up together, and you could make 75 to 100 bucks on that, that your cheapo investment on that. I love fishing stuff too. Again, there's many brands. I do have a fishing video that I started. I just haven't finished it up. Uh, it's been a while. I'll have to pull it back up and see if I should reshoot it or not. But So I get that question on that too. We're actually about to the end, so um, I don't want to just rant on here some more. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button though, down there for us. Uh, again, I appreciate everybody coming on and spending the evening with me. Uh, new videos out tomorrow. You know, for those in Patreon, um, Patreon video tonight. As soon as I get off here, I literally am going to post it within the next 10 minutes. You will see it up on Patreon. The other channel, The Art Professor, will be live this weekend. Patreon as well. You'll get to see... Um, the first video uh, up ahead of time. Um, so anyway, that's what I got for you today. Again, thanks everybody for coming on, and I really sincerely hope you all enjoyed the show.